Welcome to part 13 of the SIG Cougar build. You're looking at a Jack Stafford Models Piper Comanche. Uh, my dad and I built this boat 30 years ago. And we got it to this point, we lost interest and I hung it on my wall and it's been there ever since. And I finally got it down to take a look at it, see what it would take to get it finished. And it looks like I have to strip the covering off. You know, the covering's 30 years old, it's, well, it's monocoat. And I'm going to glass it, uh, shoot it with, uh, oh, probably some glass coat epoxy, rivets, panel lines, retracts, flaps, whatever it's going to take to bring it into a scale appearance. Definitely a cockpit. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It has a 72 inch wingspan, 815 square inches of wing. It's supposed to weigh between six and a half and eight pounds and fly with a two cycle glow 49 to a 65. I believe these are still available from Leisure RC models. You can find them on the web. They carry a few Jack Stafford kits. Oh, what else? Oh yeah. You're probably wondering why I haven't been posting any videos. I Put them on the discussion. I don't know how many people have seen that, but anyways, I burned up my computer, burned up my camera, fixed the computer, got a new camera. It was defective. The camera was defective. I had to send it back, got a new one, and we're ready to go. So after the intro, I want to get into some questions and answers, very short little bit, and then we'll get right into the build. So I'll be back in a second. Kits, I think, are the way to go because you don't have that cookie cut. Actually, fiberglassing, painting, uh, if you roll it forward, it's kind of press it like this. It's hard as a brick bed for a leading edge. One last thing on tip blocks is that you want to cut outside the line. Welcome to Cougar Build Part 8, the Formers. We are on step 29 in the manual. In fact, this is Part 9 of the Sig Cougar Build. This is a Sig Cobra. This is the 20 size version. Let's get right into the questions and answers here. Uh, I'll start with the questions I get asked the most uh, at the flying field and around in the area when I go to air shows and things. And the most asked question is, uh, how long have I been flying? I've been flying for 54 years. I started in 1964, this summer will be 54 years. And see who taught me how to build. And you'll see up here, uh, that's my dad, he taught me. And my grandpa over here, he taught me how to build. They both taught me how to build. And the best way to learn to build is to actually buy a kit and build it. Start with a simple kit, you know, that's close to your abilities and uh, just build. And the more you build, the more you learn. That's, that's the way it works. Uh, there are other videos out there. Uh, different guys have put out uh, commercial videos that you can buy that show a lot of good things on how to build and let's see uh, what was the first plane I've ever flown and that would be a Midwest tri -Squire. you can see right up here that's my dad and his tri -Squire. and then, matter of fact that was the day I took my first flight was on that tri -Squire. and let's see uh, now to the online questions and one was, is my Cougar going to be nose heavy? Yes, it is definitely going to be nose heavy. With a larger engine in the front and the retracts, it's going to be a little nose heavy. So I'm going to have to do some creative shuffling with the radios to get the CG close. The last thing I really want to do is add lead weight to the tail, but in desperate situations, I'll have to do that. I've done it before on Cougars, added some lead. It didn't seem to affect the performance much, so that is an option that will be the last resort. Okay. Uh, another one. Well, yeah, there it is. Uh, I had a question on what prop I would recommend on a 46 size engine. And it comes down to the manufacturer, really. Uh, but in general, uh, I use, on my 46s, 
On some, I use a 10-6, and on others, I can use 11-6. It depends on the manufacturer. But uh, that prop range, 10-6, will give you a lot of good RPMs, good pull. APC prop, that would be my recommendation if you're looking for any kind of speed to pull like a Cougar. And uh, if it's a real powerful 46, uh, go to 11.6. And a cup and a comment that I got that was very, uh, very good comment, and it pointed out that I left out a couple things. And one was, let me find a pencil here. Is what kind of glue to use when you glue in your servo box into the, into your wing? Um, number one, you don't want to use a glue that's going to attack the foam, like a segment or something like that. You don't want to use something like that. Uh, you can use Gorilla Glue. I've heard that has good uses on styrofoam and wood. I've never used it myself, but I've heard that. I like to use epoxy, either five minute, 15 or 30 minute. That works really well. Aliphatic resins, uh, carpenter's glue would work pretty well. And uh, the next thing that was brought up was, I didn't mention what direction to put the servo in. That's important too. And you want to put the servo in so the horn is towards the back. And the reason for that is if you put the servo in the other way, it's going to cut into this area back in here. And you don't want that because your aileron servo has to sit right there. So always install your retract servo in this particular situation with the horn towards the back on the servo and easy way wire points to the back and your airline servo will go next to it since i brought it up and the reason that is important is that you want a little bit of moment between the servo horn and the control rod or the control horn on the aileron and what happens is your servo arm rotates and the radius of it will kind of pinch in on one side. So you want to make sure that you have enough room that it's not gonna be excessive back here against your horn. Because if you do, you're gonna get a bind and you don't want a bind and you don't want the, whatever you're hooking it to, to swivel around. So just, uh, just a little heads up when we get to that part. And you want your aileron servo horn to face the front, not the back. Because that would leave a real short moment for your arms. It'll give you more positive control, but you will definitely get a bind back in here. I run across that a couple times uh, with different kinds of linkage. And uh, the connectors you use makes a big difference. We'll go into that later on down the road. Okay, I'm gonna put this stuff off to the side and we'll get right into the fuselage and we'll see how far we can go. Before we get into the fuselage, I did forget one more thing and that was, let me grab a piece of wood here. And that was when I was telling you to uh, put your wood on your fuselage, you want to uh, strike a line and then cut it off and glue it on. One thing I didn't say was when you draw that line, you want to cut to the outside of that line just a little bit. And the reason for that is you want a little edge like right here to sand on, um, on both sides. So you want a little bit of an overhang to uh, sand back to the fuselage. And it'll give you a better fit, a better look. On a Cougar, you can be a little bit on the inside because you have to round the fuselage off, but I don't recommend that be on the count that if you make it just a hair short, you're gonna end up filling your wood with uh, spackling compound or uh, micro balloons and resin, and it's just more work. So always cut outside the line, get it situated so it overhangs on both sides and you'll be good to go. All right. Pins on the top of the fuselage. I talked about this before, that one's kind of loose, but 
on these back here. I left these in on purpose just to uh, remind you that when you have pins in and you have glue underneath, you need to turn the pin a little bit, that breaks them loose, and then pull them out. And when you do that, you'll hear a little snap, and then you know you broke the the glue loose, and the pins will come out easy. What I'm going to use now is 80 grit, and I'm going to flatten this top out, then I'll sand the sides. So let me get at that real quick. It won't take long with this uh, 80 grit sandpaper. And you can hear it running over the glue spots, but it's pretty smooth already. I'll do more on it in a little bit. I just wanted to get that flattened out to a point. And I have to go after the sides now. And you can see that right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right here, it's sticking out about an eighth of an inch. Uh, maybe not quite an eighth, but pretty close. 80 grit, 80 grit sandpaper makes real quick work of this kind of thing. And you want to be able to run your finger on here and not tell where the side ends and the top part is so it's nice and level. And for this, I recommend a sanding block of some kind. You can use a 2x4 with sandpaper on it or something like that if you, if you don't have a rubber block or a hard block like this. Just knock the chunk off the back. This side I already done, so I'm not too worried about that. And just by luck, this little piece got knocked off the back when I was sanding it, which is okay because it broke off flush where the uh, horizontal stabilizer is gonna mount up. So that was a good thing. I don't have to worry about that. Might have to trim it just a bit, but I can, I can live with that. I have a little bit more sand to do on here. Uh, see if I can do that real quick. That's pretty good. Let's see where we are in the book. Oh, okay, we're definitely not there. We're way past the wing and stuff. Okay, centerpiece. I tucked a lot of this away when I was working on it. All right, it says we're on step, looks like 83. And we can see on 82, we pin the top of the decking on. And it says take a knife and carve it off around the corners. And let's see what's beyond that. Then center up your uh, canopy and, and turtle deck. No problems. So we'll get on to the sanding of the corners. And I'm not too sure how much to take off, but right here on the firewall, it shows you how much you need to take off. That's why they say to use a knife and to carve it back. So we'll use a knife. This is not exactly the best carving knife in the world. It seems to be fairly sharp. No, well, it's not as sharp as I was hoping for. You kind of carve it in close to this block up front, your firewall. The firewall is pretty rounded. I gotta change blades. This blade is not gonna do it.
Oops. Having all kinds of problems with my fingers today. I have a blade laying, laying right here. This is just a number 11 surgical blade. There we go. I'm going to cut towards myself. I don't recommend you do that, but in this instance it works a little bit better for me. When you're carving, you'll find you get right into the triangular stock. And when I get it carved down a little bit, I'll zoom in on it so you can take a look. Where I'm at. You can see the different difference in the wood in the side and the top. Alright, I just about got it where I want it in the front. That's just the very beginning. I gotta go all the way back with it. But I'm going to zoom in to this point right here so you can see the different colors of the wood. I drew a couple of lines on here so you can see where the sheeting ends. And right here on this line is the top sheeting. And this is the edge of the bottom sheeting. So between here and here, you have the triangular stock. And that kind of shows you how round you should have it all the way down. It's just... Uh, a lot of sanding, a lot of cutting, carving. Patience is a key. Take your time. And I'll be drawing my lines on here, just like I did on the wingtips, to get a more accurate curve around the sides. Well, I took my knife and trimmed all the way back. Took off as much as I wanted to with the, with the scalpel. It's as far as I dare go with that. Then I took my felt pen. I made my lines. They're about an inch apart. You just kind of lay your cardboard on here. Or if you have a flexible ruler or something, use that. Draw your lines. And I made them about an inch apart. I'm going to darken them up a little bit so you can see them better. Some of these didn't come out so well. I'm going to have to turn it around so I can see what I'm doing. These are just so I can see the roundness of my fuselage. Go back a little ways into the spots where I haven't sanded. You should be able to see those lines a little better now. Turn it a little bit. And from where I'm standing, you can really see where I sanded and didn't sand. I don't know. Maybe you can see better on a head-on angle. No, maybe not. There you go. How's that? You can really see this edge right here where it comes all the way up. It needs to be sanded round. What I'll do is uh, grab my sanding block and I'm going to start knocking this down. And as I go, I'll keep putting my lines on all the way down. 
until I get it nice and round to where it matches this curve in the front. It's going to take me a little time, so I'm going to shut the camera off for a bit and grind it down, and I'll be back. <laughs> Well, there it is. It's completed. Sanded pretty well. There's some fine sanding to do in spots, but not too much. I don't know if you can see those lines or not. But they're there. The shape is really good. You can look down the side there. Hopefully you can see that. It's It has a pretty consistent shape from the back to the front. Well, that's as far as I can go for tonight. It's getting kind of late, so I'm going to shut it down, and I'll be back in the morning for me, and a flash, I guess, for you. We're on step 83 still, and uh, step 83 has three parts, A, B, and C. Step A was is two, really, is to take the eighth inch balsa that they supply, and uh, make the inside lining or the gluing surface for the turtle deck and the canopy. I kind of skipped that because I found that it makes it really hard to sand this round when this thing is in the way. Uh, I really don't do that anymore. I kind of skip over A and B and get it rounded where I want it set my parts on there just to see an alignment of some kind because another reason for it is you need to build the stab get it put on there get the vertical stabilizer in place and it has the two fairing pieces they go on let's see if i can grab one it goes on both sides of the stabilizer and until you find center and get everything lined up you can't really even sand these to shape to slide inside of this turtle deck. So you're better off just marking a center line like I did. I don't know if you can see the center line. But I put a center line on here. I should have showed you that earlier. But it's not necessary because you use the very center of the back of your fuselage. And your uh, firewall should already have the, uh, the center line marked horizontally and vertically and you just line those up draw your line and it's done and you can mark a put a mark on your turtle deck and set that right on your line where the center is and set it up and you can you can see where it's supposed to go but I saved that till later just as easier I found to have it set up where your vertical stab is already glued on and all you have to do is made up the two side pieces, the filler pieces, and then sand them round and get that done. So, what I have to do is finish the sanding. And I'm basically going to do the same as I did here to the bottom sides, to the other side of the top. Get that all whittled down and sanded where I want it. And then I can proceed with uh, the next step, which would be, uh, in this case, mounting the stabilizer, vertical stab, and then putting on the turtle deck and the wind and the canopy. So I'm going to break away again and I'm just going to start grinding and cutting and get that finished and when I come back we'll get ready to uh, mount the stab.
there it is. It's finished. It's been fine sanded out. My lines are just about disappeared from the 220 sandpaper. I ran it on the edge, smoothed it out. And I believe in a segment, a couple segments earlier, I said that I was going to sand the top and then put the stab on. Well, that's not going to happen. That's kind of a little bit out of order. I want to get the bottom ground down first and get this, these edges done, get all the balsa dust out of the air before I continue on. And let's see, what else do I want to tell you about? Um... Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Right here, you see I drew a line. Now, you're probably wondering what that line's for. That line is for these little teeny tiny pieces of 64th inch balls, or not balsa, but uh, plywood. And this is the back of my wing fairing. It'll be glued, it'll be glued right there. The tip, this little tip is gonna go right on that line, like that, let me grab the wing. Might be easier to show you what I'm doing here. And this little piece will go right behind the wing, right at the trailing edge. A little bit of a gap in between the wing and this little piece. And it'll glue on just like that. Oh, no, not like that. <laughs> like that. And can you see that little bit of a, a loop right there? Well, that that's so I can add my polyester resin and micro balloon and uh, make the fairing. And it gives it something solid on the inside to grab to so it won't just run off. That's what that is. And another thing I was pondering on, and another reason that line is there, is I was thinking about just sanding this all around. And I've done that before, and I had to use a larger piece of this 64-inch uh, plywood so it lays up into that curve that you grind into the side of the fuselage. But it takes a little bigger piece, and I thought, well, maybe if I don't do that, grind it off up here, I can just stick those things on there, sand up to that point, and it should be okay. But... There might be a problem there because when I sand in the, the curve or the corner, sand it down, that corner might run all the way up into, let's say, up to here. And then this single piece of, uh, of 64th inch and my filler might not quite conform to the shape of the rest of the fuselage. So I might end up having to sand all the way down. I'm going to go up. So what I'm going to do is sand up to this point, stop, check it out, see if it's going to work. And if it won't, then I'm going to sand the rest of the way. That's what that's all about. Now, you see I got sandpaper up here. I, I've done this in a prior video. And a lot of you guys who've already built are going to say, well, why is he going over this again? And I'll tell you. Um, what I, my thoughts were when I first started making these videos were to accommodate guys that have a good flying abilities. They can fly a Cougar. If you pass them a transmitter, they can fly it, but they've never built an airplane because they, they constantly buy ARFs. And if they decide to build, which I run across several people that say, well, I'd like to build a plane, but I'm not going to start with a trainer. This is a good way to go. I think a Cougar is just as easy to build as any trainer. Because if you don't want to sand it, you don't have to sand it, you know, and you still have a low wing, high performance sport plane. So that's why I kind of go over things. And those little snippets in before with the music and shows me sand and then grinding and stuff. That is so people will understand that it takes time and effort to get a good round fuselage. You have to have patience. And I didn't want to have any misconceptions out there that you just rub the sandpaper on there and it's done. Well, that's not the way it works because it takes time. And I wanted to show the steps that I go through to do that and not waste a lot of your time showing the whole thing and uh, that's what that's about so let's get on with the sandpaper to knock it down quick I use 80 grit in a block and I'll use 80 grit sandpaper like this I'll fold it put it in the pad 
and do it that way. 80 grit on a T-bar. And the reason I use a T-bar with the 80 grit is if you use a block or a paper just to get the shape, there's a possibility that when you look down that thing, it's going to be wavy like this. And you'll see me working the T-bar, or you've probably seen the, that segment, where I'm working the T-bar around that edge like this. And that's to, to get rid of all that waviness. So when you cover it, if you use monocoat or fiberglass, it don't look like the back road of some country, some country back road somewhere. And that's what that's for. I use 120 grit in the paper and on a T-bar. 220 on a block and in the paper. Because this is what I used at the very end. That's what I did with this. I wrapped it around like this, flattened my hand around it, my fingers contour, and just go at it. And it takes, it makes that nice and smooth. And I know a lot of you guys are going, well, I went through this before. And like I said, if you're bored with this kind of stuff and going over it again, just skip over top. And I'm sure there's something up the road here that's going to interest you. Okay, I'm going to get back to this. I'm going to throw a bunch of balsa dust in the air, grinding this down. And when I get through with that, I'll be back and we'll get on with it. Well, I finished the fuselage. It's all sanded and nice and round. I ended up having to sand all the way up to the trailing edge of the wing saddle. And I'm just going to go with a larger piece of 16th. So that is that. And we're at the point where we're putting on the stab. And you see, I got the wings on. The stab is sitting here. I had to do a little bit of sanding on the, the saddle where the stabilizer goes just to get it level and it's on the bubble on the level is perfect i used a square just to double check measured up and it comes out to five inches exactly on both sides so that's nice and level what i did is i put uh, two blocks one under each wingtip right where the the uh, foam core meets the wingtip block I stuck a piece of wood, same size on both sides, in the same place. And I jacked up the fuselage. I got another block under here. Made it level using my level. And the bubble is dead center. Just like it is back here. <laughs> and that's, a, that's pretty close. Well, now it's not where it's supposed to be, but it will be when I'm done. The stabilizer, I measured that out already. I pre-measured it. It's uh, 25 and 13 sixteenths from the corner of the foam core in the back and the wingtip block. Measured it on both sides. Just took a long ruler like this. And let's see. Did one of these numbers here. Set it right there in the corner. 24 and 13 16 still even after I bumped it so that's pretty good I know it's the same on the other side and you can that's why I set up the string you can use a string and do the same thing do the little marks like I showed earlier in an earlier video and you can do the same thing what I have to do is take the stab off mix up some epoxy I'm going to use 30 minute this stuff right here and uh, stick the stab down. I'm going to pin it and that'll be as far as I can go. And I'll probably end the video right there. And when I come back from, well, when I do the next video, which will be 14, the vertical stabilizer will go on. And then we'll set the turtle deck and the canopy on in uh, part 14. But we're going to deal with this right now. I have a Robart uh, incidence meter here just to double check my incidence, come, you know, making my fuselage level, jacking up the tips, and right now it reads zero where it sits and everything is level. Going this way on my stab, that's perfectly level, so I'm not worried about any incidence there. When I get to gluing this on, I'll be a little more careful with the level measuring the corners 
getting it just right. And when I push the pins in, the bubble on this level will be centered. Should be no problem. I'll double check it on the corners with the with the square. Okay, let's get this stuff off of here. I'm gonna take the incidence meter off, uh, do a little cleaning up so I can work a little better, and I'll be back in a second. For those of you who haven't used an incidence meter before, I thought I would uh, show you that. You can probably see the little needle wiggling around in the center. What you do is you set it on your wing, put your leading edge in one side, trailing edge on the other, level up your model. So using a level, put it on the top, level it up the best you can. And you can see in the center, say the leading edge is over here and the trailing edge is on this side here. Let's say that's up a little bit. You see the needle roll and that is positive incidence. When it goes the other way, it'd be negative. It depends on what side of the wing you put it on. It doesn't matter. But that, that's basically how it works. And when it's on zero, then you have zero incidence. There's not much else to really do about it. Um, what I do, like on this plane, is I put the incidence meter on there. I'll jack everything up with the wing tips and stuff. Rotate the wing until the meter reads zero. Then I'll lay the level on the fuselage and see where my fuselage is at. And if that's level also, then I'm, you have zero incidents, basically. Then I'll set my stab on here. And do the same thing, put the level on here. And if that's level, that means I have zero incidents. If it's down, you make the adjustment, sand in the back, bring, bring it level. If it's tilted to the side, at this point you want to sand either side to get your stabilizer to set level. Pretty much that's all there is to it. Set that back out of the way. And get some of this dust off of here. Have a little mixing cup. 30 minute epoxy. This is the hardener, this is the resin, red label, black label. And, uh, well, I don't know how much I'm going to mix. I do know one thing, the more you mix, the quicker it sets up. It starts to generate heat and it'll set up quicker. And it looks like I have in here not even a quarter of a teaspoon. Or, you can say... 2.5 milliliters is about what it has according to the mixing cup and with this I'll bring it up just it's a hair below 2.5 so I'm gonna bring it up just a hair below 5 milliliters it doesn't, I don't think it has to be super exact, but it has to be close. Won't be needing this anymore. Stir stick. I explained stir sticks earlier. Mix it up really good. When I measured out my stabilizer, I almost forgot. When I had it up here, I measured it all out and it was square and level. I went ahead and put a felt pen dot right in the center. I don't know if you can see that dot in this very center right there. And I also have it on the fuselage. So when I put it back on, all I gotta do is just drop it on here like that. Remeasure it, pin it, level it. I'll be good to go. All right. Get the glue on here. 
And I'm going to put quite a bit on here. I'm going to let it ooze out, which is just fine because I'm going to put a little bit of a fairing with the polyester resin and micro balloon around the bottom lip. That will uh, cover up any excess glue, but I will wipe the excess glue off, of course. That's what the denatured alcohol is for. Probably already guessed that. Sometimes I get pretty sloppy with this stuff. Make a mess. <laughs> end up having to wipe my board down, or if I miss it, then I'm in, I'm, I have to get out the sanding block and uh, sand it all down. Which is typical, <laughs> at least for me. If I use wax paper under here, I wouldn't have a problem, but I didn't bother to get it out this time. I think that's all I need. There's a good helping on there. Stick the, that over there. And that is approximately center. Or very close to it. All right, what I do with my measuring stick? Here it is, hanging on the board. Move this on the floor for a moment. I use 30 minutes because it gives me a lot of time to to mess around. Okay. Hmm. Huh. That looks really good. 24. Might be just a little bit off. There it is. 24, 13, 16. This should be the exact same. Twenty-four and thirteen sixteenths. It's right where it has to be. Looks like I don't have my stabilizer squared. You can get a little bit of noise from the my furnace. It just kicked on. I'm gonna stick a pin in here to hold this a little closer to where I want it. Measure again. I'm the type of person that measures about 20 times before I'm absolutely satisfied with my measurements. Right there. Sit back down and set another pin in here. Now they have two pins in, I'll measure it again, just in case it decided to move. And it did, just a little bit. And the third pin will keep it from swiveling again. I think it moved one more time on me. That's that. time looks right I'm 
Not quite. To loosen this pin up. That's it right there. Perfect. Now I have to grab the level. Find where I put that dude. Oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> here we go. Set this on here. Wow. That's perfect. That is perfect. Get my square out. Measure the corners. Now I have to get onto the floor, it looks like. Yeah, I can see the bubbles just a hair off, so I'm gonna stick another pin in try to get level a little more level Well, it's nice and level. Everything's good. It's glued. But now I have to get the excess epoxy off. And the best thing to use for that is alcohol. I use denatured alcohol. Hold up a little pad. Get it nice and wet go underneath it and get the excess off. That looks pretty good. Keep folding up my towel here. A little on my fingers. Some on the back. You just don't want it looking like it's running down the side of the fuselage. <laughs> And wiping it off like this will give you a nice, good, solid joint because it puts the glue up inside where it belongs. And it smears the excess along the fuselage nice and level so you don't have to worry about that even if you cover it with monocoat. And I'm going to cover this with polyester resin and fiberglass so it definitely will not show a little bit more to take off there it is That looks pretty good. Yep, that looks good. Just eyeballing it, make sure. All right, 
that just about wraps it up. This is gonna have to set for 24 hours. And uh, we're gonna leave it right here. So, I guess uh, that's it for now. I'll come back and we'll take care of the vertical stab. That'll be right up in here. Maybe do some hinging too. Uh, that's something that has to be done yet. Along with the turtle deck and the canopy. The canopy won't be glued on for a while because I'm going to put a cockpit in there. It's just kind of a, something to take up the hole underneath the canopy. What I might use is an old canopy. Not an old canopy, but an old cockpit. And uh, it's over here. Let me go walk over here real quick and grab it. You'll probably recognize this one. <laughs> it was intact until I started taking parts off it. And it was oil soaked. You can see how oil soaked it got all the way up into here. And I pretty much condemned it. But what I'll do is rip the canopy off. And I got a really cool looking pilot in here. I don't know if you can see him or not. He has... Um, face mask and a hose that I made. I have a cockpit with an instrument panel or a dashboard with an instrument panel and a headrest. Uh, I'm probably going to scavenge all of that and then set it in there. I'll tell you a little bit about as we get to it. I'll tell you a little bit on how to make a good dashboard headrest and stuff like that. If you use a William Brothers Pilot, you don't have to worry about a face mask unless you want to carve one out of balsa or something. The hose, I can show you how to make a hose. That's kind of interesting and easy to do. Let me set this off to the side. So until next time, have a good one.